Hey, and welcome to the Hopcast. Thanks for coming back, everybody. I'm Brad Schmalewski. My name is Ken Hunnameter. And we got some tall boy cans going on. Hoppy beers in cans from the Midwest. Right. Water themed, too. It's kind of <laughs> like... It's true. <laughs> Not to say that they're watery. Yeah, no. But uh, they have water in them. They do. <laughs> uh, we got one from here, Half Acre. They're tuna. Uh huh. It's an extra paleo. A little extra. Yeah. And from Toppling Goliath, we have their tsunami, just regular paleo. Okay. What? Is extra is just like a double, right? Uh, I would say just like a, a touch hoppier. Okay. Um, in bitterness, but that's kind of like a. I mean, nowadays, you just kind of call your beer whatever you want it called. Okay, I guess. <laughs> but I think the Toppling Goliath is a little higher ABV. I don't know. It does not say. Because tuna is only 4.7. That's a nice, easy drinking can. Yeah, it's a that's a crusher right there. Uh, I saw a bunch of bunch of those dudes doing shotguns over at the brewery. Jeez. That would be a, a good candidate for a shotgun. <laughs> Should we start with regular pale, though? I guess so. All right, let's, let's crush some tuna. Really nice pour, nice and clear. Yeah, it's uh, it's certainly not one of these uh, you know New England style no. hoppy beers, uh, <laughs> but it does have a little bit of haze to it. Um, you had quite a big head on yours, only like two fingers when you first poured it, but it went down fast. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, good looking beer, and I mean you don't even have to really get your nose in there; it's yeah. it's coming out of the glass pretty good. Sweet, pineapple-y. I'm getting a little bit of grass. Ooh. More on that side. I mean, really, this beer is all about the hops, as you would uh, imagine from a, from a pale ale. But uh, really, really nice aroma on that. Yeah, let's see what it tastes. Oh, yeah, way more grassy, straw like taste. Yeah, and it's uh, it's got this like nice little toasty malt character, but just finishes super bone dry. Um, just makes it absolutely drinkable. Yeah, it's very it's heavily carbonated too. It feels like it's big in the mouth feel like it's bubbly, it's just a lot of carbonation. Yeah, and um, I mean those it's got a, a fairly stiff bitterness to it, but then also has like a nice rounded malt or uh, I'm sorry, hop flavor as well. And with the aroma, I mean this is just a total hot bomb, mm -hmm. um, but is done done so in a, in a very nice balanced way. Yeah. How do you think this would go with tuna? <laughs> um, I, I mean, I could sit down and drink a beer and a can of tuna, so, but I can do and that. And a with, can of tuna? Yeah. <laughs> Give me a can of tuna can and of a can, tuna, of, can of beer? And a can of beer, and I'm, <laughs> I'm good. Maybe a little hot sauce on there. But we should note that this can of tuna, on printed on the bottom here, it does say dolphin safe. So okay. we're good. Nice. I've actually been seeing more breweries print strange things on the bottom <laughs> of their beers. I saw uh, Gary's Alarmist. He printed. Uh, he had the date, and then he put sad. It's like <laughs> a little Trump reference yeah. there. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you get people on the bottling line that just get a little bored sometimes. They're like, yeah, let's throw this out, man. <laughs> okay. It's like, fine. Let's just put my name and see yeah. if someone like. I can't say I wouldn't do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, this beer, I think, just got canned mm -hmm. recently. Double Daisy Cutter got released uh, here as we're recording this like a couple days ago. So I think this was also in that same release kind of schedule. Yeah, it was uh, draft only, I remember, maybe a year ago. And uh, this is the first time I've, I've been seeing it in cans. But it was great beer. Uh, so good decision on them to, to throw it in a can. Mm -hmm. I think as it warms up, this could replace the Gossamer Hole that we've had. Mm, I see. Uh, could even be rivaling its own beer, Daisy Cutter, yeah. as maybe a go-to, reaching for that tuna. Tuna instead, instead of Daisy? <laughs> 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 All right, well, I'm digging this. I like this. Still got a few more cans of back of the house. So yeah, yeah, I mean, much aligned with uh, most of what Half Acre's putting out. They're, they're consistently doing awesome beers, yeah. really good hoppy stuff. So uh, if that if that's what you're into and, and you come across it here in Chicago, I'm not sure how, sure how far they reach. Right. I think they're uh, slowly growing with the new uh, brewery in Bowmanville. 
that kind of opens them up to mm -hmm. get it done in places. When I was in there for lunch recently, they talked about the sour program. Mm -hmm. and somebody was leaving that was part of the soap. Maybe some sour beers coming from Half Acre. Yeah, you don't really typically see stuff like that coming out of that brewery, so yeah. it should be interesting. Yeah. All right, well, let's finish this up and then get into the Toppling Goliath. Yeah, cheers. All right, so now we've got the Toppling Goliath. Yeah, Tsunami, uh, they're pale ale, and uh, these guys are known for uh, their pseudo Sioux. Which just got canned and is here in the market as well. That was that collaboration they did with the Field Museum. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like one of those white whales for a while. Now you can, you can see it uh, popping up a little bit more readily available. I think they're brewing some down in Florida at this point. Yeah, I think it says these are brewed in Florida or like they were oh, yeah. working with the brewery in Florida. It says under special agreement with <laughs> yeah. Lakeland, Florida. So, you know, the brewery isn't in Florida, but I think probably to get it distributed and they're going out of Florida. Some weird. That's odd. They have a special agreement with the town of Lakeland, Florida. <laughs> the whole town. <laughs> got the whole town working for us. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're a brewery that... Contract brewed by Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> I would say they're like one of those sought after breweries for a while because like, you couldn't really get your hands on them. Uh, makes me think of the brewery Sun King. Mm -hmm. Kind of same, like, oh, we really like their beers when I have them, but I can't get them. Right. No idea. There was a lot of, like, uh, beer trips, people driving out to Iowa, uh, just specifically for, for Pseudo Sioux. So um, it, was, it was only a matter of time before they were going to expand and, and make some sort of a move to yeah. get, get beer out there to more people. Cool. Um, so, yeah, let's try, let's try this out. Let's drink it. So I feel like it's a, a tint darker. I would agree. Yeah. yeah, just a touch. And the head is definitely darker, like a more uh, brown, ruby kind of color to the head. And I think it's like it's a little clearer, but you can definitely see some some little particulate, yeah, hazy type action it's just going all on. It's all kind of floating and like yeah, basically that water that you get in high school where it had the little balls in them. What? <laughs> <laughs> like space age water, they just had stuff. The just... dipping dots of water. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> so they just that. floated in there. <laughs> hmm. Sim maybe a little sweeter in the aroma. It has kind of a. Um, I'm thinking it. It has. There's some Simcoe hops in here. It has that kind of caddy-like okay. aroma, but um, maybe not exclusively Simcoe, because no. it's not like. Overpower. overwhelming and it's not really turning me off <laughs> it's not turning me on <laughs> let's uh let's give it a try cheers all right um uh, it tastes way lighter than i thought it was going to be it's um yeah it's pretty light on the palate as far as the the malt is concerned but it's got a Pretty heavy hit of, of bitterness. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of reminds me of how IPAs used to be. Okay. <laughs> Back in my day. Yeah, like <sighs> when we first started drinking uh, craft beer and stuff like that, they were, I don't know if it's just because we were just getting into it, but for me it was like really bitter. Like yeah. IPAs were very bitter, and it seems like to me they've kind of trended towards more flavor and aroma with the hops and less bitterness, especially less. with this like new juicy trend that's going on. Right, it was it was like, we're just gonna add hops in, we don't really care what it is, we got hops. And it was like tons of malt too, so you had this thing that was super malty and just like really bitter and really hoppy and people were like, yeah, this is good, I guess. <laughs> I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, this is, um, Certainly not like that because the malt character is, is so much less, but uh, definitely has that, that hop bitterness to it. Mm -hmm. The brightness that the tuna has is kind of, I'm kind of missing in here, just the, the light feel, the like can crushability kind of yeah. idea of it. It's certainly more aggressive. To me, it, it, 
it makes me think it's a little higher in alcohol as well, but they don't they yeah. don't list alcohol percentage on here, so we're not really sure about that. But oh, yeah, it's got to be enough. Got to be more than four point seven five. That's like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> But I've had the pseudo Sue. Have you had that one? Have you had their beers? I have, but it's been a while. Okay. I haven't had it since they've come, come into the market. The pseudo Sue is really nice, but also like a big IPA. It's big. Yeah. yeah. I've heard that's been a little bit different uh, since they've uh, what made a special agreement with Lakeland, Florida. <laughs> uh, slightly different than what it used to be like coming out of their, their brewery in Iowa, but... I suppose that's to be expected, at yeah. least at first. Maybe they'll dial in a little bit more, but we'll see. Yeah, but neat to see them here in Chicago. I hope they do well because they are they have a good name, but they're competing against also people like Half Acre here. That. Sure. Well, I mean, here in Chicago, they're competing against everybody from all over yeah. the country. I mean, we're, we're kind of right in the middle of everything, so we, we get, we're a little bit spoiled with distribution. We get yeah. a lot of stuff from everywhere. So it's a tough market to be successful in. But. Yeah. So I hope people start picking them up a little bit. I'm sure people will try them. That pseudo Sue's gonna, I think, be the number one because it's just a field museum collaboration and has the, the street cred. Yeah, he definitely had a lot of rec name recognition before coming here. So I think that's a good way for them to get into the market and maybe showcase some of their other beers. Yeah. Uh, but. People, I mean, Pseudo Sue, even, I think Pseudo Sue is a, has a bigger name sometimes than Top Link, Top Link Goliath. Okay. In and of itself. <laughs> they, like, you know? know the beer. I know Pseudo and Sue. Like, I don't even know who makes it, yeah. but I know Pseudo Sue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so maybe this will be, uh, that'll, that'll be a good thing for them. Yeah, cool. Well, yeah, finish this and that'll do it. All right. Thanks for watching.